All right, I have an Alto Sham Combi Oven with Air 88. All right, so we're gonna start by pulling up a service manual and we'll just go step by step. This service manual is written very well. So it makes troubleshooting this error code a lot easier. So the first step here that we have is to check the incoming gas pressure. I'm gonna skip this step. I'm gonna come back and test it because I'm gonna test it when we have dynamic gas pressure. So the first test we're gonna do is come right here and it's asking us to ohm out the igniter and we need to get between 30 and 60 ohms. All right, so inside our combustion chamber here is our igniter. These two wires come right up here. So we have power off right now. We're gonna disconnect them from the circuit. We're gonna ohm it out and we are getting 38 ohms. That's within the range, we're good. All right, so we are within the range here. 38 ohms, we're good. So technically we should go down here, but I'm gonna come back up to this bubble here. So the reason why I don't check the gas pressure first is because in order to check the static gas pressure, so that means while the unit's running, the igniter would have to turn on. As soon Once the igniter turns on and gets hot, it actually changes the ohm reading. So you can only test the igniter when it's cold. Do not test it after you've just fired it, okay? So now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna check the gas pressure. We're gonna confirm that. And then we're gonna carry on through the flow chamber. All right, so we're gonna go ahead here, turn our gas off. And we have two ports here, in and out. We wanna make sure we get the in, okay? This one works on negative pressure. You cannot test outgoing pressure to check dynamic or static gas pressure. Okay, so all you need is a flathead screwdriver. You just gotta back it off a couple turns. The screw doesn't have to come out completely. And once we loosen that off, we can throw on our little rubber boot with our little gas hose kit. And we're gonna slowly turn the gas on. Remember, always turn on the gas slowly. You don't wanna blow ga uh, gas valves or regs. So nice and slow. And as you can see there, our static gas pressure is 8.2 inches water column within the range. But what we're more interested in is the dynamic gas pressure. So we have ignition. Okay, we're down to seven inches water column. That's dynamic pressure. Okay, it's holding right now, so that tells me the igniter's working. And let's see what happens here. So we have about 20 to 25 seconds for flame sense. So let's see what happens here in the next little bit. So it's holding, and right there, the gas valve just closed. And look, we're back at 8.2 inches water column. So that's telling me that we're having some issues probably with the flame sense. That's the hint it's giving me, and it's probably gonna log an error here very shortly. We know the burner's definitely off now because the gas pressure's gone up. And let's see when the board will recognize it. Right there, error 88. Okay, so there's our issue. All right, so we were looking for five inches water column. We did get that. So that means we can move down to the next bubble. So turn the power onto the oven, measure the AC voltage on J4 pins 12 and four. So this is, this is a test to see if the igniter is getting voltage. We know the igniter is getting voltage because we had ignition for 20 seconds. So we can skip this bubble, go down to the next one. This one's also asking to check power. This one as well. So we can skip all these bubbles. Look how quick the troubleshooting becomes now. Okay, we're gonna simplify this thing and we did that all in what, a 25 second test it took to show that there was no flame sense. So let's keep going down. Voltage, voltage, voltage. We have voltage at all these places because we had ignition. Okay. Now we're gonna come to this bubble right here. After the igniter preheats approximately 21 seconds, does the gas valve open? Yes, we know the gas valve opens because we dropped down to 7.2 inches water column, or sorry, seven inches water column. A pressure drop on the incoming side of the valve would indicate the gas valve is opening. Gas valve supply must be between 5.5 and 14 inches. Okay, so we know we're good there. We have seven inches. So now the next thing it's saying, measure the flame current sensor. Is the flame sensor current at or above one microamp. So we're looking at one microamp. So let's go ahead and test that right now. 
All right, so we're gonna go ahead, let's open up our circuit. So how we do this is we remove the flame sensor from the module. Okay, make sure you clip in here with some alligator clips. There is current going through this. This is pretty dangerous. Do not touch your hands on this, okay, once we're live. So you want make sure you want to, that you're insulated and everything is done safely. Okay, we're gonna put the second lead into the module where the wire was previously connected. And we're gonna go ahead and plug it back in and we're gonna get ready to fire up here. So we have, we're about to have ignition. So now we're at seven inches water column. We know the gas valve's open. Let's see what kind of reading we're getting on here. We're only getting 0 0.42 microamps. We need one microamp. All right, so we finally got to, to the part in the flow chart where we get stuck. So is the current, flame sensor current at or above one microamp? So we're gonna go to no. So the suggestion is to remove the flame sensor, check for correct spacing from the burner, clean, adjust, or replace flame sensor as needed. In this case, we're looking for 12 to 16 millimeters should be the spacing. So let's go pull that burner and see what the spacing looks like. All right, so we removed the burner here. And as you can see, it's basically touching the burner, okay? We're not 12 to 16 millimeters away. So we're gonna go ahead and get this flame sensor replaced. We're gonna put it at the maximum distance. I feel like this burner is getting too hot for this flame sensor. Okay, and just to go over the history, we've changed this flame sensor now three times. Every three months it seems to be failing. All right, so we got the new flame sensor in. We're pulling 21 microamps. Okay, and it's holding steady there. 19 microamps, 18 microamps. We need to be above one microamp. So things are looking good for us right now. All right, so because we've had three flame sensors kind of bend like that in the last three months, so we've had September, December, now March, it tells me it's probably gonna happen again. So I need to investigate further why this is happening. Okay, so the two previous techs had changed, the flame sensors gapped them, and then same thing, three months later we're having issues. So I wanna go check out the CO2 calibration, okay? So the reading we need is 8.8 .8 to 9.4. Um, what I'm looking for is always the, the low end. Whenever I do a CO2 calibration, I'm always looking for the low end. I find when you're closer to the high end, you get a rumble and it's just the ignition and combustion is not as pure. So I'm gonna be aiming for 8.8 .8, uh, percentage CO2. All right, so let's go ahead, put our magnet in the door. And let's do our CO2 calibration and see where we're at. My feeling is we're gonna be high on this one. So we have flame sensor as soon as we're running. Now is when we wanna put our probe into the heat exchanger exhaust pipe or else you will get a high CO reading if you do it during combustion. The meter does not like that, so let's avoid that. So let's see what rating we get right now. So we're looking for 8.8 .8 is what we want. 9.4 is acceptable, but to me that's way too high and we're gonna get a rumble and incomplete combustion. So we're right at 9.4 at the moment. And let's let it settle down for a little bit here and see, we got 9.5, so we're definitely way too high. Okay, so this thing's gonna have to be adjusted. Okay, so we're gonna go on the gas valve. There's a Venturi. In this case, we're gonna turn it clockwise and that's gonna lower the CO2 percentage. So let's start making our adjustments here. We'll go little by little. So we're down to 9.1. Okay, I like to be a little bit lower. I wanna be at 8.8. .8. So we're gonna keep turning it in until we get to the value we're looking for. Now you may find that you have to turn it several turns. So we're going by quarter turns at the moment. Um, we've probably done almost one and a half full rotations. But it takes time to tweak it and to get it to perform fully how we want it to. So now we're down to 9.0. We're almost at 8.8 .8 here. So we just got to be patient. Trust the process. 
that's two more quarter turns we're down to 8.9 okay so that's good for now so right now we're in turbo mode so we're gonna go to reduced mode now so that means the combustion blower is gonna be running a little bit slower so this is when we want to hit our low end rating reading so let's fire up again now you're gonna see that the reduced mode is slightly lower than the turbo mode so the CO2 percentage is probably off by two tenths so if we just had 8.9 I'm expecting to get 8.6 somewhere in there 8.7 so let's see what we get here in this reduced mode so we're actually down at 8.6 yeah okay we'll hit fast forward here just to make things move along a little bit quicker so we stabilize there so now we're gonna go counterclockwise we're gonna bump this up obviously this is gonna bump up our reading when we go into turbo mode but that's okay we're at 8.7 and we'll give it one last quarter turn here see if we can get it right at 8.8 .8. and we'll go a second quarter turn and we're right at 8.8 .8. we're gonna let it stabilize there came back down 8.7 so now we're at 8.8 .8. let's let it stabilize there if it sits there good we're gonna go into turbo mode and you're gonna see it's gonna be about two tenths higher but that's fine so because it's the same Venturi one adjustments gonna affect the other one obviously and we are stabilized here so I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing into turbo mode and let's see how close the reading is gonna be here so once again take the uh, take your probe out of the heat exchanger pipe so we don't have a high CO reading which like I said the meter hates alright now we have combustion and if we're underneath that 9.4 in the turbo mode we're all good if not we're gonna have to investigate why that's happening so 8.8 8.9 so we're one tenth higher We're at 9.0 now, so it's usually between 2 tenths and 3 tenths, I find. And let's see if it sits around 9.0, which is what, which, which is within the range. Now, if we go adjust this to 8.8, .8, it's going to bring the reduce down to 8.6, 8.5. Okay, so it's important that you adjust based on the reduced, and then you confirm on the turbo mode. So we're at 9.0. Um, I'm getting good combustion here, no more rumbles. We are all good here. All right, so that's a service call where the unit was under warranty. So back in September, we changed the flame sensor. So the unit was three months old. Now at six months old in December, flame sensor changed again. Now we're at nine months, flame sensors changed. Now, if we go at 12 months, we're gonna be out of warranty. I don't want my customer to have to pay out of pocket for this. So at this point, I have to figure out why is this flame sensor failing? So there's two things that I kind of noticed. The burner seam is really close to the igniter, so I don't know if that's causing a hot spot. And the second thing was that CO2 calibration. So what I found was I installed four ovens, but they're 20 pan ovens, so they had heat, eight heat exchangers, okay? And all the CO2 percentage readings were low except on one oven. I kept getting air 88 over and over and over, and I was at 9.4. I adjusted it to 8.8 .8 and the problem went away. That was over a year ago. So my theory at the moment is that the CO2 percentage was a little too high. We're burning too hot. Uh, at, combust at combustion, we have that, that huge uh, rippling that's happening, okay? And we don't have clean combustion at ignition. So my theory is that once we drop this thing down to 8.8, .8, we should be good. But I can't say 100%. Now, AutoSham is looking at shortening that flame sensor. Cause it doesn't need to be that long and it might be that it's too long that's why this issue is happening but i'm not really having this issue on a lot of the other ovens okay so we'll find out in three months time if dropping that co2 percentage helped or not and if i do get the call back on this i'll definitely do a follow-up video and we'll have to come up with a different different game plan different strategy different theory to figure out why this flame sensor keeps failing every three months